Yes, sir. Mr. Didat, you've been telling us. Sorry, yes. Mr. Didat, you've been telling your speech today about the contradictions of the Bible. That's very good. Secondly, you were saying about the fact that the Bible hasn't lived up to its contents. That's fine as well. That's one side of the story, but can you scientifically show some facts from the Quran, from the Quran to show that the Quran is a revelation from God, re revelation from God, please? That would be ideal for the Muslims and the non-Muslim brothers. Yes. You see, there are so many things in the Quran which lends itself to scientific discoveries and proving of creation. For example, you see, if you meet one of these young men or learned people, those who say that there is no God, it's one of the answers to the previous question. Huh? Now it depends on the type of person that you are meeting, you can use the type of facts that you have at your disposal. You meet a man of learning, a doctor, a professor of astronomy, biology or whatever and yet he says that there is no God. And when you ask him, according to his learning, the origin of this universe, how did this universe come into being? And that person will postulate, he's going to start explaining to you that you see millions and millions of years ago, billions of years ago, this universe was one piece. And there was a big bang. And out of that big bang, that explosion, this universe came into being and things started moving in space and they have been ever since moving at a regular pace. So that type of a person, we might ask, he says, now, where did you get this idea from? When did you learn this about the Big Bang? He said, no, yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. 50 years is only like yesterday. So he discovered that there was a Big Bang according to our astronomers, according to our physicists, and out of that this universe came into being. So he said, you see, an illiterate man in the desert, 1400 years ago, he couldn't have known that, could he? So he says, no, never. So he says, well, listen, now we quote the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, Awalam yara lazina kafaru. Do not the unbelievers see these atheists, these agnostics, those who say that there is no God, can't they see? Awalam yara lazina kafaru. Anna samawati wal arda kana taratkan. That the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation. Fatakna huma and he split them asunder. And the biologist, you ask him, where does life originate? He said, in the sea. In the water, in the maya, where did you get that from? He said, no, it's our discovery. When did you make the discovery? He said, yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. So an illiterate man in the desert, he couldn't have known this. He said, never. Well, listen. Allah tells us through Muhammad, He said, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ And He has made from water every living thing. أَفَلَا يُمِنُونَ Will you then not believe? You atheist, you agnostic, you man of science, will you not believe? He said, look, where did Muhammad get all these ideas from? Plant life, animal life, vegetable life, vegetable, every life, He says, has got pears. 1400 years ago, in the desert, this man is talking. Where did he get the idea from? He says, Subhana lazi khalakal azwaja kullaha. He says, Glory be to God, who has created mates of everything. Imma tumbitul ardu, of that which the earth produces. Wa min anfusikum, and from among yourselves, of the animal kingdom. Wa mimma la yalamun, and of the things that you know not. Male, female, positive, negative. He has created mates of everything, of the things that you know and of the things that you don't know. So these are for people with eyes, with sins. They can see that this is not the work of Muhammad. An illiterate man in the desert could never have been able to utter these things. It is from the source of creation who has been giving it to him. That this is the book of God.